Aloha, everybody. Welcome to um, the Aloha Friday show. We spoke, I, we spoke I running a little bit late. The Menuhunis was um, working with us, and um, they they wasn't on overtime. Those guys was kind of working. Uh, I'm not too sure, Andrew, um, uh, where those guys <laughs> was, but um, they went messing around with my alarm clock, and um, we got, um, we had all kind of different um, translations and all of that. <laughs> It's okay, they messed up over here too. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so we get um, we get uh, Andrew Molina over here, and for those of you that just join us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, small kind, small kind, discombobulated here today, but no worries. Um, we'll get it, we we'll get it all figured out um, as um, we enjoy um, the uh, the music of what you was listening to right now. And of course, I get I get um, I get Jay over here setting up a little bit. And um, I want to get Andrew on too. But Andrew, as as we were listening earlier, uh, you and I were talking about the song "Resurrection" that we were just um, listening to. Tell us about it. Now that that song also appeared on an earlier. Um, was it your first your first project? Resurrection was yeah. Two. A resurrection. I, I think it was the twelfth track to a new journey, and um, it's a song that I kind of felt like I needed to do like more justice to the song. I wanted it more high energy, a little bit f a quicker and faster. So I was thinking, you know, let me redo one song for this new album and I'm gonna, we're gonna put it the first track. I wanna throw some just kind of elements for like the shim from the Game of Thrones from New Journey. And of course, you know, just coming out off the bat with this kind of this ambient sound, I thought it would be really cool. And I'm re I really love the, the remake of the song. And plus, you know, having dad's uh, bass solo in there is, uh, was a treat as well. <laughs> Boy, that spoke to me. I heard that. I went, I heard the song before because I have, I have um, you know, I have all of your projects. You're so, so cool to send it to me. Um, so I recognized the tune, but it was definitely revamped. It was, the arrangements was different. And then um, when your dad comes in with his, um, with his bass solo in there, um, it added a nice little flavor to it. And it, it really popped. Good job, you guys. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, good morning to um, Andrew and Jay Molina from Kihei Maui. What's up, brothers? Hey, come on. Come What's on? I <laughs> woke you guys up early. <laughs> um, but uh, thanks for joining us. And for those of you that just um, joined us um, live right now on our Facebook Aloha Friday with, welcome, welcome. This is a... Um, interactive uh, chat driven show you got questions or you got comments or you want to say aloha whatever's go ahead and make those comments and we're more than happy to um uh share them over here online and uh we have um we've got a just a real treat here today these are some dear friends of mine i've known jay for my god jay um i've known you before you and i had snow on the mountain yeah um uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, brother, um, I was just I was just checking it out. I was going, you know, you and I have known each other for over thirty years, bro. Can you can you imagine? Maybe even, maybe even longer. Thirty is a good round number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it was twenty. Maybe it was twenty. Yeah. Maybe it was twenty. This is um, twenty is the new the, what twenty uh, thirty is the new twenty or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Thirty is the new forty. <laughs> Um, but I, I did want to, um, let me see, uh, we get, um, brother Marty Burns is checking in, brother Marty is, um, a part of our Ohana, he supports our Aloha Friday with the Samaraj Island uh, Social Network, mahalo there Marty, and who else hey, popped Marty. in? Oh, look at this, these are friends that you know, Muriel and Hey, <laughs> oh, hey guys, how you doing? You guys hung out with them when you played Holly Keeper in Long Beach. You guys stayed with them. Keeper, right. Yeah, yeah. We always go visit them. Always good to see them. Yeah. They are Muriel and Carl. Muriel and Carl are sweet, hey. sweet people. Really, really great. That, that's, our, that's our part of our Ohana. Yes. Uh, and um, here is a Thyra Abraham. Welcome, Thyra. Glad you made it. Welcome, welcome. She Aloha. says, Aloha, gang. Aloha. Um, her son, Frank Abraham, um, has a, a cooking Hawaiian style, a TV show uh, with Lanai. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. So let's talk know. a little bit about, guys, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, the music. Uh, first of all, uh, the Molina Ohana. My goodness, you guys, you guys have some pretty amazing um, uh, pedigree 
It's in your DNA, bro. I want to show this right here. When I show this picture, <laughs> when I show this picture, Jay, um, tell me, tell me what we're looking at here. Uh, that's my dad's orchestra. You know, when when he first started playing, I think when my dad started, he was like about twelve years old. If, you, if he's the he's the youngest one in that picture, the littlest guy. The little guy. <laughs> and I think he, I think he was around. He was probably around twelve, maybe thirteen years old when when. Uh, he was he joined the band but that's all his brothers you know uh he had a band with all his brothers and that's uh there were like nine brothers all together and two sisters but the the, the boys made up the band so the, those are all my uncles and my dad wow and the note here the molina brothers orchestra um entertained generations of Mauians from the 1930s through the 1980s. And this is a picture taken in 1938. My yeah, goodness. So, yeah, um, dad, my, dad, yeah, my dad would have been like 13. I think. My goodness. So, music runs in you guys' DNA, brother. Uh, you, your whole family, all your uncles yeah. were musicians, huh? My, my uncles were musicians and, uh, and growing up, you know, I mean, I got to see them play all the time. You know, we because he, of course he would take us along whenever he whenever the band played. Anyway, so we we were at a lot of a lot of weddings, a lot of uh, graduation parties, anniversary parties. And as as I got older, and I got I started I started when I was eleven playing playing the bass. And you know, I was in a rock band playing you know rock and roll music. And, and but you know, when when I was in high school, he he'd take me along to some of his uh, his show his gigs. You know. He say, "Come along and play with me," and I was like, "No, nah, I don't want to play that. I don't want to play that." Music. <laughs> you know, I was all into like Jimi Hendrix and you know, <laughs> all those bands back then. And he 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 just said, "Oh, come on, come on, you know, put on your suit and let's go play, let's go play, play with Dad and the boys." But you know, I mean, it was fun because I learned all all these jazz standards. And later on, when when actually I, when, after I moved to Oahu and I was I, I, even playing in Waikiki already, I would get calls to come fill in, you know, here and there. And I would go filling with these with these old older guys, you know, and, they, and we'd start playing songs, and they go, "How do you know all these songs?" And I go, "Well, because I played with my dad. You know, my dad took me on his gig, so wow. I was familiar with a lot of the music." You know? Wow! So it uh, helped me, you know. Yeah. In the beginning, it didn't seem like it was going to help me, but it eventually did. Tell me what you see when you look at this three generations of Molinas over here. There, you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, me, my dad, and my son. Yeah, that was a cool we, moment. We we never played all to, we never played together. But but my when my dad used to play, he he Andrew was little, just starting off, and he'd always when we go see him, he goes, Andrew, come up here and play. You know, he'd get Andrew up on stage, and, and uh, he said, okay, you know, we'll let you play, and he'd give him like you know 10, 15 minutes to play during their break, and uh, you know, he'd always tell Andrew, play play those fast songs. I like those fast ones, <laughs> you know, high energy fast tunes. Yeah, Dad. I remember it was the um, the pineapple festival. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, the, the, that's the, the pineapple. And festival. that was the very first time I was in front of a a crowd ever. I think I was, I was almost fourteen years old. I had no, I was, I just turned fourteen, and I I got in my you know the semi custom kamaka. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then and then Grandpa was playing, and then you were playing with Grandpa guys, and then I remember they're like, "Okay, you're up," at like eleven thirty. I just remember I was so nervous. <laughs> I think we still got pictures somewhere, but it was that was. And when I sat on that stool, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And my hands got all like you know, like all sweaty. I was getting nervous. <laughs> I mean, I used because prior to that, you know, I play in front of the, you know in the living room, right? So that's like five people. <laughs> but like jumping up to like 200, 300 people, like it's like whoa, this is crazy. And um, yeah, I think that was one. Of, that was kind of near like when Grandpa would do these shows, and then I think. You know, he would let me play like two songs or something. But that is wow, so right. sweet. Good times. <laughs> so sweet. Three generations right there in that picture. And of course, mm -hmm. um, uh, Jay, your dad died um, several years ago, but uh, he left um, a legacy of music for generations to come. And uh, Jay and Andrew Molina continue the Molina legacy of great music. Uh, in keep it going different genres bro you know uh here's a here's a oh this is harrison um this is harrison from minnesota one of our one of our ohana right here he's checking in he hey, said hey guys 
Uh, hey, hey, what's going on? Burr, Minnesota, Burr. Oh, it's cold air, I know. <laughs> Roderick Padilla, aloha, brother. He's going, uh, what's up with you guys? Um, he's checking us in. And hey, let Roger, me see. You, you know, Roderick, he says, Billy Joe's brother, Semper Fire, Farrington grad, 65. Does that ring a bell? Billy Joe's brother? I'm not sure. Um, uh Rod, you gotta uh, give a little a little more information over there. Is this a connection to uh, the the uh, Molina Ohana that you're talking about over here? Um, yeah. Um, so you know, Jay, early on, right out of right out of high school, um, I, I was uh -huh. looking at some pictures of um, Sunflower Power, um, which was an early band out of high school. You're playing in oh, yeah. Power, right? That was, that was that was the first band I played with. Uh huh. And then. Um, from that, uh, you got a call to um, uh, go to Oahu, and you started playing with a band called Asian Blend. Uh, right. And, you know, Asian Blend resonates with me, brother, because you and I were talking earlier this week. Um, I used to stand in line outside the Hawaiian hut um, after the, um, the Polynesian show on a Saturday night. Right. The line was going around <laughs> the block at Ala Moana to hear Asian right. Blend, bruh. <laughs> right, yeah, that was fun. That was like the first gig after I moved because I, I moved over to Oahu right after high school yeah and joined Blend you know I was like 18 years old and and it's the first time in a big city because I've been on Maui pretty much my whole life right and, you know going straight from you know easy cru cruising gig uh, you know uh, gigs here just jumping into like a six night a week you know five hour a night gig you know it was, it was like 10 the hours back then were 10 30 we started at ten thirty in the evening after the Polynesian show. Yeah, and we played. We, we played at three thirty, uh, three thirty in the morning, <laughs> six six nights a week. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty brutal. Uh, here's Anella. She's saying Aloha Friday, Kamaka J and Andrew. Thank you, Anella. Hey, Anella. Thanks for hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys doing good. Aww. Um, so, you know, I remember, man, was uh, Foxy Lady 2, you guys was playing, you guys was playing all over the place. And that was the heyday yeah. of bands in Waikiki. Um, you could go club after club and see these yeah, big could, bands playing live music. Us, yeah, just walk down the street and you could go from one club to the next to the next. It'd be like great, great uh, live music everywhere. It was, a, it was a, the heyday of, um, you had... Um, Phase Seven. You had Aura. You right. had um, you had Brentwood. You had, you had yeah. Asian. All the In fact, I had a friend of mine. I don't know if he's going to pop on. He was a bartender at Foxy Lady when he heard Foxy Lady Two. He goes, "Hey, I know those guys." He was a bartender back then at that at really? Foxy Lady Two. Oh, man. David Moon. Yeah. So uh, he's uh, he goes, wow. "Yeah, I like check him out. I like check him out." <laughs> Yeah. So from that now, just real moving forward now, so from Asian Blend uh, came an opportunity for you and Al Pasqua to um, put a band together uh, at um, the Spin Drifter at Kahala Mall, and that um, uh, came to be Music Magic, which was a fusion right. jazz band. Uh, yeah, that was, that, was, that was the beginning of Music Magic. Yeah, and our good friend Freddie, Freddie Schruder's... Um, uh, yeah. Popping in right yeah, there. Yeah. When the band started, when the band started off, it was a trio. It was Al, myself, and uh, and a drummer named Renato Guasconi, and we started. And what happened was uh, uh, our our friend who was an agent at the time, Billy Ann Sabala, she she called us and she said, "Oh, uh, you guys want to audition?" We didn't really have a band together, you know. She called. I think she called Al and said, "Hey, I need a, a trio to play at the Spin Drifter," and uh, so Al called me. He said, "He said, hey, you want to do this audition?" So we said oh, okay, so we, we got together. We, we we rehearsed about you know three or four songs, and went in and did the audition. And they said and she called us back. She said great, they want you to start next week. And we 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 didn't even have the band together. We, we had like four songs, so we had to like cram for the whole week uh -oh. just to learn enough music to play for like a couple of hours. And back in the day, I was working at the Kahala Hilton. That was our Pahana spot um, right, right. to come and see um, music magic. With, hey, there uh, we are with Chikoria. Look at those guys. Look at those guys. Man. A nice shirt, Dad. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 had gone, we had gone to uh, uh, the Waikiki Shell to see uh, Chikoria and his band. Uh -huh. and we, got to take, we got to take a picture with him afterwards. And the interesting thing is that uh, the name Music Magic 
came from one of Chick's songs. He has a Chick. He has a song called Music Magic. Yes. And uh, we bought, borrowed that for our band. We thought it was a great name for a band. So this is an iconic picture with Chick Corea right there in the middle. Uh, in fact, Chick yeah. passed away a couple of maybe a month or so ago. Yeah. Re recently, yeah, very recently. Yeah. yeah what a talent. What a, we, we lost a great, great man, great musician, and a great mm -hmm. man. Um, but Music Magic was uh, in Hawaii way ahead of its time with the music scene because everybody was into disco and everybody was into, um, you know, playing uh, uh, cover songs uh, more, more right. often. But Music Magic kind of struck out on their own. Al Pasquale uh, was writing his own music. Um, yeah. And uh, I must tell you... What was that? I was going to say that, um, I and for folks who weren't aware of, of that, that particular time, Jay uh, was a Philip Bailey of, um, of the Earth, Wind, and Fire, because he could hit those high notes from Earth, Wind, and Fire um, that would just blow you away. You still got, you still got that high, um, you can still reach that, Jay. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I got to wear like really tight underwear. <laughs> You know the song "Reasons," right? You know, da 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 da. And you just keep going. I, I, still, um, I still do that. I still do that once in a while. I do that about once or twice a year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, <laughs> and so, um, you know, tracing music magic. Uh, you know, you guys went your separate ways after after a number of years together. Uh, you played with a number of different bands. You toured with um, uh, Henry Capono. You backed up Loyal Garner on um, the Ali's. Um, you were quite busy, quite busy. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I think right after uh, Music Magic, uh, I was playing with Danny Couch, with, with the Danny Couch band. We did that because he had just come out with his album. So we put a band together, great musicians. Uh, we played with Danny for a while. Then I was with, uh, I played with Capono Beamer for a while. He had, he had him and uh, uh, Keola had split up and, and Capono did his first solo album. And I was part of his little trio band. Sweet. And then, then the Elise came along, and then I joined the Elise. I was at the Elise for about a year. Nice. Then moved to L.A. I was, I was actually living living in L.A. for a couple of years back in the 80s. Right. You know, about 80, 85 or 86. Mm -hmm. Lived in L.A. and played a little bit around L.A. Yeah. Um, I just saw that um, you still are playing whenever the opportunity arises, and there's a band called Slam on Maui. That um, is quite popular, and this is um, this is the the latest lineup, isn't it, of of of, of Slam yeah. on Maui right now? Well, yeah, no, uh, uh, the we we, we uh, the band broke uh, broke up in about uh, about 2012. We're we're going oh, okay. for a couple of years. I think we played from 2012 to like 2013. Okay, that was a fun band. That was kind of like a music magic uh, incarnation, sort of. Nice, you know, great player. A uh, couple of guys from Oahu, David Choi, killer sax player. Uh, George Tavalaris was uh, also living in Oahu. He used to play at the uh, Marrakesh with uh, Azure McCall and Tennyson Stevens. Wow. Uh, the, the rest of the guys from Mike, Mike, Mike Kennedy on drums there. He's a longtime uh, uh, drummer from Oahu. Great player. Played with, with tons of people there. Recorded with a lot of people. Yeah, some great faces. Great faces there. That was, that was, a, that was a really fun band. That was, uh, we were kinda, I, I felt great because it was kind of like resurrecting music magic a little. Yeah. Now, in the meantime... You have a young'un here coming up along, watching and listening to all of this music. Comes from this rich heritage of Molina music from, from the uncles and from, uh, from his granddad, his tutu man, that is encouraging him, right? And so, Andrew, you, you um, as someone comes by the house, you're about 13 years of age, and um, starts picking away at some, some, uh, some songs on the ukulele, um, kind of what catches your ear that kind of gets you started on this path? Um, and it was kind of interesting because, you know, like I, you know, we've gone to these family reunions with, you know, my grandpa and his brothers playing music. So it, it was always like in the environment, you know, when we have these reunions and, you know, of course I see dad go to work every night with his bass. And, um, but up until the age of 13, I, I guess I never really showed any interest in um, music. And then my, when my friend, he just, he, yeah, he brought his ukulele over on a Friday and uh, he had it in his backpack and he took it out. And then we're like, oh, you take an ukulele class now? He's like, yeah. And so my grandma was just like, oh, here, you can use my kamaka. 
because she had one from the 1960s in her closet. Wow. So she took it out and then she gave it to me. And then he taught me like, uh, he taught me honey baby, I think was on the first day. <laughs> and um, I think it was like Hawaiian Superman, something like that. But then I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of cool. So like, I remember I was like, oh, you kind of come next week and can, you, can I learn some more? And he's like, oh, okay. So it was a thing where he'd come every Friday and he would kind of um, show me some stuff. And then my mom, and then, yeah, and then my mom was just like, oh, let me teach you this picking technique. And then she taught me something. And then my cousin, who was um, playing a lot of Call Creator Boys at the time, he started coming down and started showing me like how to pick. Because before that, I was just strumming. And that kind of just laid my foundation at the very in you know, the first couple months, I was like, you know, listening to Kyle Crater Boys a lot until I discovered Jake about six months later. <laughs> so, so uh, you're immersed into uh, Troy Fernandez and his amazing uh, ukulele um, licks over there with the Kyle oh, Crater yeah. Boys, right? And uh, definitely all of that that was happening. And uh, oh, let's see, Kalai. Kalai says, hooey, he's up there in Northern California. He's a Waimanalo <laughs> boy living up north. And um, Ooh, yeah. he, he says, next generation. Yes. Yeah, Kalai. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, For sure. <laughs> so, Andrew, now, now um, your dad says, um, uh, you ever heard of this guy, Jake Shimabukuro? Oh, by the way, um, uh, you like go listen to him play. Is that is that how that went, Jay? With um, with getting him to see and hear um, Jake. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I knew he was kind of getting interested in the ukulele, and I think I, I had re I had remembered I'd seen Jake somewhere. In fact, I, I was doing a gig on Oahu with Asian Blend. Uh, this was for like a I don't know if it was a wedding or a convention, and then Jake was actually. Uh, the, he was a he was a I think we played before or after him. I can't remember. But uh, I remember seeing him, his setup, and I was going, wow, this guy plays ukulele. And he got all these, like, pedals and, you know, distortion pedals and stuff like that. I thought, oh, it must be kind of cool. Yeah. But, I, you know, I, I had known about Jake, and then I, I just kind of mentioned to Andrew if he had seen Jake, and he hadn't. And I think, but Andrew, I think I got you, did we get you a DVD or something of Jake? Yeah. And kind of like we were talking about earlier, when he first heard the name, you know, like, I pictured a completely different guy. Like, <laughs> I was picturing a guy from Japan, you know, <laughs> like an older gentleman, and he, you know, he sits in a chair, you know, plays wine music. So I was like, okay, <laughs> Jake Shimabu Kuro. But then, yeah, once I seen that DVD, you know, I saw like a young kid about 27 years old and, you know, playing like, you know, all this rock and all this crazy stuff I've never heard before on the ukulele. And I was like, wow. I remember, and I told myself, I was like, wow, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember I was just so into that DVD and then, like a month later, he came to the Mac here in Maui, and that just kind of sealed sealed the deal. And I was just like, wow. and it just started this passion for me. I was like, wow, I gotta learn all this guy's songs. It's just, I don't know. And it, there was something. It's the first time I was really passionate about something. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and um, so that kind of you know got you started on uh, the interest with ukulele. And uh, from what I'm, from what I've noticed. From the very start, from your very first project, you know this is the third one, and we'll be talking about Evolve, which is your third, your third cakey over here, Andrew. Yeah. Um, uh, how has it evolved from your first, you know, when you, in the beginning, and then your journey, and now all of it evolved? How is, where are you, and how, do, where did you come from in, in terms of your progression? Here? Yeah, and um, so around 2012 or 2011, I think I was a senior in high school, and. Uh, I just remember having such a hard time because I had, I couldn't song right, you know, and I didn't know how to arrange. And I was still, you know, I was still playing Jake covers and I was just like, dang, am I going to make the leap and become an artist? And cause that's something I wanted to do. I felt like, you know, the legacy, the Molina legacy is on my shoulders. So I didn't want to give up. And then I was like, okay, but I, I was just so frustrated because, you know, songwriting is just, it doesn't just come out of thin air. It's like a specific skill. And at the time I didn't know how to create. And then at the beginning of 2012, I just like, I think, no, actually I took a break off from ukulele my senior year because I was so frustrated. And so that time off kind of like reversed all that kind of, I, I guess, bad muscle memory of just like playing what I know versus trying to play something new. So when I picked it up again, I just, I had these little ideas. I was like, oh, maybe I can make it into a song. 
But looking back, oh my gosh, like I really didn't know what I was doing. I was completely trusting my ear. I didn't know, I like knew zero music theory, but I I just went by feel pretty much. And um, yeah, just looking back that, like, the album is very elementary compared to the most recent one for sure. So it's just kind of funny looking back. And um, yeah, and then with, even with the new journey, that was, I think it was a step up in uh, arrangements and um, what I could do from the first album. So I remember I was very, I was very happy about the progression. And then with the third one, you know, after my music theory and learning a whole bunch of new things, I, I tried some new stuff and that's something with me, you know, I'm always pushing, to create something that's different. You know, I don't want, like I said, I don't want a new journey 2.0. I wanted something like something different to raise the bar. And that's like, that's always been my, my driving factor is to push the ukulele into, you know, its limits. Sweet. Here's uh, Stanley Gomes uh, Jr. He's a Wailuku boy now living here in Southern California. Um, hey, what's up? Um, what's up so uh, he always says, if anybody, everybody says, hey, are you related to, um, to uh, Gomes uh, from so-and-so and so? And Stan always goes, if the last name is Gomes and they're from Maui, the answer is yes. So, <laughs> um, right. Stanley is uh, one of the two Baboos crew. We have a show every Wednesday uh, at uh, oh, yeah, yeah. 1 o'clock. <laughs> so... Andrew, you know, what is very cool was, um, you know, I was noting over here, if your first CD, um, you composed eight out of the 11 songs. You were a nominee for Ukulele Album of the Year in 2014 uh, um, uh, for the Nahoku Hanu Hanu. Um, your second CD, you composed 10 of the 14 songs. And something on there which was very cool was uh, you got an opportunity to do a duet um, with somebody that you really admired a lot. And who was that? That was like a, that literally was a dream come true. And that's something that I used to think about in like when I was a freshman in high school, I was like, you know, one day the coolest thing would be to be able to do a duet with, you know, Jake, you know, he's been my idol for, since I was a kid. And I was just like, wow, wouldn't that be something if I had him to do like the harmony to a song or something? So I called them up because over the years, you know, like, we really gotten closer and I, you know, I, I think I went from like being just a fan to like, oh, you know, he's actually a, you know, I guess a serious ukulele player now. So I remember his tone with me even changed to the fact like, you know, I was kind of a peer and he saw me progress. Um, so, you know, we were hanging out since like 2013 um, after I guess I became an artist and then, and yeah, and he would, he would always give me good tips on, on what, you know, what I can do you know, with uh, just planning, planning future um, endeavors and stuff like that. But then uh, <laughs> I just called him. I was like, hey, you want to do a duet on my new album? And no hesitation, he says, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, wow, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, but it was definitely one of the highlights, highlights of my life for sure. You know, like, again, I, I, not anyone can get Jake on their album. So I feel very, very fortunate to, you know, have him as a friend of mine and uh yeah a mentor you can sweet, say sweet sweet yeah you, you also you also got uh your, your other good friend buddy on there clay gamiao oh yeah talented clay gamiao yeah, too you know very lucky to have him as well you know one of my really good friends and it was it was honored to have him on as well yeah mutual friend clay and of course um you know they were hard hit by uh the flooding in holly eva um yeah. the past couple of weeks there's um a gofundme and um, they've reached the uh, the, um, the, uh, the the dollar amount on the GoFundMe, which which yeah, yeah. we had an opportunity, I, I, you know, to I think to they share. Went over that. They went over the original. Uh, Great! You couldn't ask for a sweeter family out there, the Gamiows. Yeah, um, they are, they're, yeah. They're like our own. They're, they're our Ohana. Our Ohana. Yeah. Every time I go out to Haleiwa, drive past Long Bridge, uh, Long Bridge, drive down in there, and it's always a yeah. come, go eat, come on, bro. You know, we wait over here. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Come, come, you like. Yeah. Yeah. Come, we like to do yard work. We're doing yard work over here, you know. Right. <laughs> Beautiful people. Yeah, yeah, one time I went over and then Uncle Derek put one sign with next to the lawnmower. And he goes, he goes, I'll start here. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah, Gamiyao's great people. And of course, you had um you had um on that particular cut um uh, Craig Chi on cello. Oh yeah, another good friend of ours, you know. Him and Sarah just like nicest people. So, but it was cool because I had him um, playing cello, and you know he's 
And that was kind of the instrument he started off with. And, you know, he plays yeah. ukulele now. So I was like, Great. hey, let's get you back on that cello. So it was really cool to have him on as well. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, living, they're living in Oahu now. And they're doing really well. You know, nice. They had a little, like, little boy. Craig has a son now. But he's been doing all, a lot of online stuff. He's doing the Hawaii Ukulele Festival online. They're going to, right. He's going to host it right. here. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, the recognition of your music there, Andrew, um, and featured in 2017 on an indie movie called Revenge in Kind. And you got two songs on that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, sometimes when I'm flying the, the friendly skies of Hawaiian, uh, I just might hear um, some, some music of Andrew Molina. Is this true? Yeah, 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 it's true. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it myself, but I know it's there somewhere. If you're watching an Ocean Vodka commercial on Hawaiian Airlines, you Sweet. Like here, Andrew, in the background. <laughs> uh, so you know what, um, Andrew, as a third-generation member of um, Maui's largest musical dynasty, I mean, when you look at that band that we showed earlier, um, you know, you have um, done so well in following your passion. Um, we've seen it uh, definitely become a, uh, a step above. And you know what I've always said to young artists when they start out playing, they go, oh, you know, um, I want to do a, and no disrespect to Jake or anyone else, uh, you know, I want to do a Jake Shirambukuro song, or, uh, you know, I want to do a song, a Sting song, or I want to do a song by, you know, uh, and I would always say, you know, it'd be really cool if someone else could say one day, I want to do an Andrew Molina song, or I want to do a, you know, <laughs> and I think you're, you know, you're, you're coming to that point of which the music now is so distinctive and different. Um, mm. I don't think... And, and Jay, help me with this, man. I don't think we can peg hole Andrew's music, what, you know, uh, what kind of music he does. I mean, it is so eclectic. It defies description, yeah. huh? It's, it's a mix, you know, like he does a little bit of, uh, he can pretty much do a little bit of, of, of everything. You know, he tries to get that some, sometimes on his albums, you know, like, mm -hmm. you, you can, like his latest uh, on Evolve. He's doing a classical piece by Eric Satie. Uh, he's doing one from Sting. He's doing one from, you know, he's got like, uh, you know, called Dream On, iconic song from uh, Steven Tyler. Aerosmith, yeah. Aerosmith. So mm -hmm. it's like he's, he's, he tries to cover everything. He, he's always looking for something different, a new, a new genre or something he can cover. He loves Hawaiian, of course. Well, you know, you can hear, you can hear, you can hear the Hawaiian, the the, the warmth, you know, of, of his playing. There's pop, there's rock, there's Latin, there's a little bit of jazz in there. And right. it seems to me, as a keiki growing up, listening to all, going to all the family parties with with grandpa playing with his with the uncles, right? And yeah. you know, and then hearing dad with with his with his jazz, um, and then. The fusion of listening to Kao Credo Boys and listening to, you know, um, what's coming out of Andrew right now is just a uh, eclectic blend of all of those genres. That's what I'm hearing, you know. Yeah, uh, it, and I think he, he, he wants to do that, you know. He doesn't want to be pigeonholed into one genre, you know. He wants to, like, try different things, you know. He, he's, you know, he loves the Latin stuff. Uh, he loves, he, he loves, you know, I told him, you got to do more classical, you know, do more of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. little, more, more Hawaiian. I told him you should do a whole Hawaiian album. You know, just, and I think I think that kind of goes back to the. Um, oh, sorry, was that that? Were you saying something? No, go ahead. No, I was gonna say that, and that kind of goes back to the wow factor of what what I saw Jake do is like in that DVD that I saw. I was like, wow, like he's. I mean, he's playing kind of like a Hawaiian song at the end. He's playing rock, and that, I love that variety because you see, you know, people you know they one they don't really know what to expect sometimes and i'm just like okay let's throw a rock song here let's do a like a little bit more of a jazz and i think i don't know that's just my calling i think is for that variety so it's just something that i've always enjoyed doing and i just love throwing like you know those like this weird stuff you know like tv show themes now you know like you know, with, with game of thrones i just like having that that repertoire of you know it's like oh wow what else can the ukulele do now so i don't know that's just that just calls to me for some reason. First yeah. being stuck in like one genre. Here's some music from Evolve.
little humble instrument, <laughs> right, um, yeah. has taken such a quantum leap with so many ukulele players. And Andrew, um, you have taken it um, to a completely different level with the arrangements. And in that particular song, Evolve, now, what, what sets this, your latest release, Evolve 3, what will sets it apart from your, your, the other two projects? I just wanted to try things, well, again, like with the second album, I wanted to try things I didn't have. So, you know, collaborating with other artists and just try to play, you know, like I tried the baritone ukulele on, on that album. And, you know, I wanted to provide 14 songs. Um, so in this case, I was like, okay, I'm going to add the addition of the low G ukulele, which I've never, you know, my whole life I've been a high G player. So that's one new element. And I think it was a uh, showdown, showdown with the scorpion was uh, I tuned the ukulele completely different. I think it was a whole step for the for the G and the C and two full steps down with the E and the A. So different tunings, different genres. I never really messed with classical before. Um, with Englishman in New York, it kind of has a like a reggae kind of feel. And just it's just technically way harder too as well. Hmm. So yeah. just like just throwing those elements of so like I guess just looking at it is like okay. I want to just try to play something at the next level than what I've done before. Well, my friend, you have succeeded. Here's Showdown. I really love this. That is so tasty, my goodness. Um, so this um, this is an original song. Showdown is an original. Your yeah, that's an original song, and that's the mm -hmm. that's the one with the, the um, weird tuning. Okay. And um, with this one, it was interesting because, like like what I was said before about you know growing up and um, from when I first started songwriting, I really didn't know what I was doing. So with this new tuning, I still don't like. I was kind of back in that zone where I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, I have to trust my ear. That's the only thing I can rely on. So I just started. <laughs> I found this cool tuning. And I just started coming up with uh, these parts, and I was like, okay, let's make it technically super difficult, but like sound cool at the same time. So that's why I had these different parts of these pull-offs and these um, these hyper picks going. But I'm very happy of how this song came out. Because yeah, I really had I didn't I didn't have any theory to work with in this song. It was wow. completely trusting what I like. Tasty, 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 my friend. Thank you. It's probably the hardest song on the record. Wow, it's sweet. It's sweet. Now, our uh, our friends can pick up. Um, a copy of Evolve and his other two projects at andrewmolinaukulele.com andrewmolinaukulele.com and um, you know learn more about Andrew and uh, about, about his music um, I think the beautiful thing is uh, that Jay um, now and I, and, I, and I know for the past several years you come up, both of you come up for NAM and you've been um, during that time you include as part of your tour and so Jay now um, as um, with your bass guitar adding them um, to a little you know more a depth to the to the sound and also as manager so um, how did that uh, come about what uh, Andrew your dad's you you're going on tour you get a chance to go out and and um, dad's along here well, um, what's going on here dad and son and uh, we're good well, Touring? Yeah, I think I think with Andrew, like when Andrew first started off, he was just playing solo. You know, he would he'd be doing his gigs and he'd just play solo. And you know, I I go along with him and watch him. And then, then one day he I think he he asked me, he said, "Hey, Dad, you know, can you play with me?" Because I said, "Well," and then I said, "Why don't you get some of your friends to play with you?" And he said, "Well, this this, this stuff is kind of hard for them." <laughs> <laughs> you see, he said, "So I so I, I got a guitar because I'm not a, you know I'm a bass player." my pretty much my whole life so i got it i bought a guitar and then you know i started playing with him just on guitar and then and you know where it was from year. right huh 
and it all started at the Banyan Tree. This is this is like our very first gig. I, I um we had the, the we had the beginning CD in hand, and we're like, okay, we gotta we have to go, you know, like promote it, I guess. But you know, this is like so. This is the very beginning of the career, and we'd be doing like six hours at the Banyan Tree in Lahaina, and then you know, no pay, just tips, and put the CD on the table and hope that people would buy it. <laughs> that was, wow, those are the days, huh? <laughs> Those are fun days. I didn't realize there's a term for that. I learned several years ago. It's called busking. I didn't know what busking was. Well, yeah, busking. Yeah, yeah. Right? For tips. I had to go look up what busking is. Uh, I got, okay, uh, that, that's what that is, you know. So, uh, and I know, and um, Jay, you never really um, forced Andrew to go pick this up and go, you know, because you, you, you're, I know you, Jay, you're just a real laid back guy and you just kind of let, let things flow around you, Jay. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, the, way, the way I looked at it, if, if Andrew gets interested in music, then he'll find it, you know, he'll find it by himself. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to push anything on him or, or uh, I did, I did get him a bass guitar though when he was little, but then he, he completely ignored it. He didn't want to, oh. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he wasn't interested. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is the cover of um, the latest project, Evolve, um, with Andrew Molina that you can pick up at Andrew Molina ukulele.com and um great great music on there i wanted to just share this now this you're playing the ukulele has has taken you to some amazing places the both of you um what are some of the what, what is where are some of the places that you've you, you've traveled to here uh, andrew oh man i mean like it all started with going to like the west coast and I mean, just even seeing like the appreciation and uh, this magic about the ukulele out of Hawaii was just cool. And we're like, oh, wow, let's, uh, and that's when we first met you, I think 2015 mm, at Halekipa. Halekipa. So, so that was our very, that was the very first stop of the very first tour, actually. Yeah. But before that, it was all like, you know, it was the banning tree and it was like maybe some restaurants here. But yeah, over the years, it's been like, it's expanding. You know, I've been to the East Coast. You know, I went to like um, like the Kentucky Ukulele Festival. <laughs> I've been to uh, like the DC area. Um, but then, of course, we've gone to like Tahiti was the first international place we went to, and that was insane. Like, wow. I mean, it's kind of like Hawaii, but very different at the same time. Yeah. Um, so Tahiti was just beautiful, and then going to like the UK, you know, Ireland, Austria china like it's just i don't know it was just so eye-opening and i was just like wow i can get used to this <laughs> <laughs> here is an iconic picture in austria you guys yeah. tell us about that experience you guys oh that was man that out of all the venues like stage wise and presentation you know that was like our first time under like the you know like some of this you know great lighting and you know the venue and the atmosphere was just like oh, wow yeah. so this is what it feels like <laughs> um, to be like a concert stage level and it was just it was just incredible you know the people were enthusiastic and yeah that's probably one of the favorite our favorite places that we've uh, performed at sweet now i noticed the signature hat worn backwards and the red shoes andrew <laughs> yeah so 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 that's a you know um uncle um uh uh ledward kawapana is known for his red cowboy boots you know, and I've seen a number of pictures with your footwear being red. Is there, is there any significance to that um, for 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 um, for Andrew Molina? Um, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I would converse back in the day when I was in school, and then um, I bought another pair. I think around yeah, 2014. And I was like, oh, these are pretty cool. And then I then I saw a red one, which is I think that's the one on the new Journey album. So it's like a white, it's like a red top with like white bordering, like a classic Converse look. Cool. And then in 2017, me and my dad, we, we had a day off, and then we saw a pair that was all red. And he's like, look, dude. <laughs> and he goes, we should get that one. He goes, that's red. I was like, that is red, it's really red. <laughs> and then it just kind of just took a life of its own. I, I wore it to Tahiti, then I started wearing it all over the world. You know, Paris by the Eiffel Tower. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's just become one of, it's become a thing with me, I guess, part of my um, wardrobe. But yeah, I everyone asks about the red shoes. They're like, oh, what? 
and people look forward to it too. Like, oh, you don't have like someone. Someone once said, "Oh, that you look weird without your red shoes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that and the hat. Yeah, I guess that's kind of like a trademark. I that's guess that's beautiful, but, man. That is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Here's uh, NTK. She's coming on saying, uh, "It's amazing, amazing. You guys are." Um, Anella Hatchie says, Andrew, I enjoy ukulele rock music. Awesome sounds. Hey, Andrew. Oh, thank you, you Andy. Go in. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, enjoying that. We stay, we stay with that fan. We stay with them when we when we come up for NAM. Oh, nice. Nice. In down. Yeah, so really so nice people. We love them. They're like so Arohana. sweet. Um, so quite a, a, a number of miles you guys have. You guys put on some good air miles, man, all over um, the UK and... Uh, Austria gotta have some gotta have some great stories, man. Tour, tour, touring stories are always are <laughs> are always um, uh, fun here. Uh, anything? Yeah. yeah. Any, any stories from the road, guys? Um. Oh, Andrew, you, Andrew, you can tell them about your uh, Fafaru uh, experience in Tahiti. Oh, 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 and then we can talk about. Yeah. Okay. So when we were in Tahiti, um, we wanted it was kind of like a Tahitian luau. So same thing, you know, it's like on the beach and the food is just yeah, like, they, it's they similar, it but it's rough. different. What is that? <laughs> I said they, they made a whole luau just for us, just for like us and Aiden, Aiden James and his mom. You know? Yeah, it yeah and it was, it was just so cool. It was, it was near the beach and like there's like um, manta rays that come up right, right to the shore and you can pet them. And I'm not sure if you can feed them. But it was just like, you know, it's like the pictures you see in calendars. It was just that water was just so blue. And then, um, you know, we're having a feast. And then I see them grab this. There's this specific fish that I remember hearing about when I watched Survivor. It's called Fafaru. And it's like a, it's like fermented like in the sun. And they, they eat it with fermented coconut milk. And it's like, it's pretty stink. <laughs> so when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, I got to try it. Because, you know, like, I was like, I want to see if I can do like on Survivor. <laughs> so like, and and these guys and they're eating it like oh it's just like they're eating it like chips like it's like nothing and then like so like um candy. Aiden's mom had one she said it tasted like an armpit um <laughs> dad you had a piece what would you say it tasted like <laughs> oh, it was it was nasty it's like it's like it's like you know what they do uh, Kamaka they leave they leave the they take like raw fish and they put it in salt water and they leave it out in the sun for about three or four days <laughs> and then then you gotta eat it after that. I mean that thing is like. It's pretty, pretty gnarly. So we're talking like sashimi. Like it looks just like sashimi, but it definitely doesn't taste like it. But yeah, just you know, I think we filmed it too. But yeah, I, I, I think I did three or four pieces just for just for the glory. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't taste very good though. <laughs> it's it's an acquired taste. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. just gonna say it's it's an acquired but, taste, man. And the, oh. and the funny thing is that somebody had a bag of we brought, who bought the bag of mochi crunch. Somebody bought mochi crunch. Was it Aiden's mom that had the? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we gave, we gave the, we and gave then, them, them some mochi crunch. We, we, we opened up the bag in the car, and she and the, uh, the our friend who was driving, she goes, "Oh, that's horrible. That smells terrible." Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, "You are you kidding?" <laughs> you, you, guys, you guys, you guys eat that stuff, and we we're like, "Oh, we love this stuff," you know. But it's just, you know, that's how it is. Different parts of the world, they, you know, they have different tastes, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Here's Kahiao. She goes, how do international audiences versus island audiences respond to your music? Great question. Oh, that is a good yeah. question. Um, yeah, it, it definitely, the vibe is different. Um, the UK, the UK audience, they were like, man, the, the, like the energy that came from the Grand Northern Festival, it was like everyone was like standing up, everyone was screaming. It was like an energy that I don't think I've felt yeah. before actually so the 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 uk <laughs> crowd was crazy. the one in ireland they were they were like it was this tiny oh. little pub in the middle of dublin it's called the stag's head and um it's very it's a very small room but then on yeah. something they call ukulele tuesday they have like over 100 people in this tiny room and Sometimes you know you know the irish people they're they're good for having a good time and having a drink and <laughs> <laughs> they're like the energy from that crowd was just like, wow, this is yeah. like super cool. So that was fun. Yeah. And China, China was very different. That's the first time, like, I actually had like fans come up to me like, oh my God, I want to take a picture. Like I, I got my celebrity moment over there. So I thought that was pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah. China, China was awesome. Um, 
yeah, it's just, it's just different and it's just things to look forward to. You know, when you go specific places again, it's like, oh, you know, like the energy here, the atmosphere here, or, you know, it's all different, but I, lo I love it. It's, you know. Yeah. Um, and TK says, I like be your roadie. She like travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, sure. a, I got a few ukuleles. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, Here's our friend Cindy from the Central Coast. She's saying aloha, everyone. Um, hey, Cindy. Hi. Aloha. Cindy is part of Andy Bumatai's Hamajang Gang. Andy has his show oh. every uh, every morning, 6 a.m. out here? of his yeah. home in Mililani. So um, shout out yeah. to Andy and to the Hamajang Gang. And Cindy, thanks for joining us. Always, always good to have you on board. So, um, my goodness. Uh, you guys have traveled quite a bit. Those that the ukulele has taken you to places you never expected you would ever go, huh, Andrew? Um, Definitely, it's it's crazy thinking about it because I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, you could picture some stuff. You know, like growing up, I was like, you know, I want to be a traveling ukulele player. But to like experience it is like a completely different thing. It's just like kind of surreal. It's just like wow. It's just like all the hard work towards this vision is actually paying off. Yeah. It's, and it's just an incredible feeling of accomplishment and i don't know yeah it's just it's i kind of speechless like yeah. of, of how to talk about it but i feel very 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 grateful for the opportunities we've had and the people we've met and um yeah it's just been incredible and jay now as yeah. you know as you look back now i mean you know um you started your journey uh, in the 60s and you come into the 70s and you with all the band that you tour with and now you know as, uh, as you see your son and now where you've gone uh, what are your thoughts about the journey um, your music has taken you along with your son now well you know it's it's like it's it's such a uh, great feeling to be able to uh, play play with Andrew and share his music you know people always come up to us and say man you know this father and son thing you guys got going man so it's so beautiful and uh, you know they can feel the, the the love and 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 that we have for each other, and and we have, you know, we, we when we go on the road, it's, and it's like bonding time. You know, we get this. It's just us, you know, driving around. We were driving up and down the coast, you know, up to California, Oregon, and Washington. So you know, we have so much fun, and, and we have like great experiences together. And, and the funny thing is, like you know, I, was, I started talking earlier about playing guitar with Andrew, and when I first started, I wasn't playing any bass at all. It was just guitar. Because, you know, I was trying to accompany him, right? And, then, and you know, I'm, I'm just a beginning guitar player. So, you know, I'm kind of struggling along, trying to keep up with him. And then we were at NAMM one year, and, and one of the guys at the Kamaka booth goes, hey, you play bass, don't you? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, how come you don't play bass with Andrew? And I go, oh, I never thought about it. I, I figured I'll, 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 I'll have to play a chording instrument. So I, I started incorporating the bass into it. And right now, I think I, I'm playing more bass than, than guitar. But, and he's uh, so relieved about it too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's good when I when I play bass. It's like, oh, okay, I'm. This is my this is my uh, my home, you know. Yeah. And when it's a guitar. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I can. I'll try and keep up with you, Andrew. <laughs> but yeah, it's very it's very special. You know, people always always comment on that. You know, every time we do a show, they they come up afterwards and they go, "Wow, it must be like so cool to be able to play with your son." You know, I wish my dad would play with me, or I wish I could play with my son. Sweet. And I'm going, yeah, it, it's a very special uh, feeling, a, a special bond we have, you know. Yeah. And I, I'm, so, I'm so grateful to be able to share that with Andrew, you know. That's sweet. Here is um, the cover of the uh, UK's ukulele magazine, Ook, and um, the Hawaiian yeah. Ook Ace heads to the UK. So um, uh, you're featured on their, on their, uh, on their magazine, uh, Andrew, and um, many great adventures um uh, on the road as well. And, you know, I wanted to share this. Uh, and for me, this was an iconic moment um, at NAM. And um, I was in the crowd that, that day when Jake invited you, um, uh, Jay, to, to play with him. And he said, um, let's do the Beatles um, song, um, uh, Come Together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know... Um, Describe what was going on in, at uh, at that moment with um, with Jake and yourself there, Jay. Yeah, well, well, Jake was at the show and uh, his bass player didn't come that year because usually his bass player would travel with him. Uh, great bass player from uh, from uh, Nashville, and he didn't come that year, so Jake was going to go up and play. And he said, "Hey, you want to come uh, do a song with me?" I said, "Sure." 
Uh, it's the first time I had ever played with Jake. And uh, so we, you know, he said, he said, hey, let's do, let, you know, come together by the Beatles. And I go, well, you know, I played it a couple of times before that, but you know, never on a steady basis. I said, yeah, I think I, I think I can figure it out. So, so we, you know, we played together. It was like it was really fun. I mean, like Jake, Jake's a great guy, a great musician. You know, so we had we had a lot of fun that day playing that song. You can see Andrew in the background in the picture. I think Kalei and, and all yeah, and a bunch of people there. <laughs> Um, if any of our friends want to, you can go to YouTube and just put in um, Jake Shinobukuro, Jay Molina, and the, uh, the video will come up. And it is an amazing um, session with, uh, with Jay on uh, bass and um, Jake doing some great stuff. And yes, you, see, you can see um, uh, Andrew over there watching his dad and watching his, um, his, uh, his hero and his, his, his idol. <laughs> <laughs> as well Look at that Brian Tolentino over there taking pictures over there looks like it a yeah, little. yeah. Brian, <laughs> Brian in the front yeah, um, I'm trying to see who else in the picture yeah. and just that Wilson, moment man. you look at that pure joy on Jake's face he's just going oh this is good just perfect <laughs> just perfect um, so got some questions from some of our folks over here um, uh, Kahi Al says what platforms can we purchase your music on so now I think I think as of maybe a month ago, it's available pretty much anywhere. You know, iTunes, um, Amazon Music. So pretty much anywhere. At the beginning, it was only on the website, but um, yeah, it's available pretty much anywhere now. Yeah, the the hard the hard copies are available uh, on the website or at Bandcamp.com, called Bandcamp, mm -hmm. and you can either pick up the digital uh, copy or or a hard copy. I think a hard copy there is available too. And Good. for Amazon, for Amazon and iTunes, it's available on digital uh, digital platform. Okay, and so we shared the uh, website. NTK wants to know uh, for performance locations and where you know any, any updated information. Um, good idea just to go to Andrew Molina ukulele dot com. You guys update. That. Yeah, yeah we'll, probably, we'll probably, we haven't done anything. We didn't do any. We had to cancel everything last year, of yeah. course, because of the pandemic. But uh, I think the one thing we have on the books right now is it, in September we'll be up in Livermore, California, uh, at the uh, Bankhead Theater in Livermore doing. Uh, th this was supposed to be this was booked last year, and we had to postpone it. But they want to try and go ahead with it this year, so we might be coming up for that. That's around September. Well, what day was the date, Andrew? About the twenty twenty second or something like seventeenth, seventeenth. I think September seventeenth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. So, so Cindy they, says, do you have any so we, plans to play at Cal Poly? I saw Jake play there a couple of years ago. Um, but I think... Yeah, that would be great. It would be, we would be great to play at uh, Cal Poly. Just, uh, you know, we, we, we got to get the connections going. And <laughs> Absolutely. Find, find people there. But, but we've been working on it. You know, it's, 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 it's a process, you know. It's like... Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a lot of little places, you know, like Holly Keepa and all these places that have little house concerts that are great. You know, and we... We hit a lot of those places and and some of the some of the ukulele stores uh like uh holly ukulele in san diego we do that sometimes andrew does workshops and we do little performances there and so kai al says um uh, you got facebook or uh, instagram um you guys are on instagram yeah. yeah so instagram you can find me at uh maui ukulele cool and then facebook just uh andrew molina i think <laughs> Perfect, 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 perfect. So uh, and yeah, you, you come to um, you come to the continent. You guys cruise right through um, Southern California without stopping uh, by. Yeah. Uh, you're going to hear from me. So um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I know the great folks, um, you know, in Southern California, um, uh, Carl and Muriel, and um, yeah. uh, folks over at Holly Keepa, um, and all of us would enjoy seeing you, and I would enjoy seeing my old friends. Uh, come through as well so yeah and then if not we'll see you at nam you know, we'll absolutely you absolutely yeah yeah pua. i know pua, i think pua went to the east coast right to visit her grandkids yeah she's on the east coast now but pula lee and i are there every year uh with the sandwich yeah. island crew and we love um uh, getting a chance to see all of our uh, all of our great friends um thank you so much what a great just hang out and talk story i just love it love it um yeah and the celebration well, of see, it's good to see you, Kamaka. We go back a long way, you know. So. We do, my brother. We do. Yeah, yeah. We really, really do. And um, 
you know, meeting uh, Andrew at Halikipa when you guys came up was so beautiful because I could see, I could see the aloha and I could see so much of him in you, Jay, um, in just being just a beautiful heart and so humble and yet so freaking talented. Stop it, you guys. You know, um, <laughs> leave some talent on a table so us guys can pick up the crumbs. You guys take all the talent, man. Us guys left with nothing. God, fun it. These guys from Maui. Oh, it's, I in the, it's, it's, it's in the blood, right? It's in the blood. It's in the, it's in the, fa it's in the family. It's definitely in the family. Um, what a celebration of music um, that, that you um, share uh, with us. And um, Evolve is such a great, a great um, project. And um, we're going to close our time together by sharing uh, some music from Evolve. And I uh, want to wish you guys the absolute best. Big mahalo to all of you uh, for joining in today and um, uh, sharing this time together with the Molina uh, Ohana. And, you know, uh, one of my promo posters said, uh, you know, uh, bass and ukulele equals music magic. It was kind of a little callback yeah, here. I, I saw that. <laughs> I, like how, I like how you put that together. <laughs> As well. Nice. So, mahalo, uh, mahalo, my brother. Thank says, you, Kamaka. Kai Ao says, can't wait to see you guys live. You got a pent-up audience over here, guys. Um, I know. We're, 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 we're waiting to come. You know, We want to come. Um, like, Mahalo, like I said, we have, yeah, we have that we have that show in Livermore, but we're going to be filling in other dates around it. Yes, so we definitely. Come, we definitely want to come down to Southern California. So. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we'll keep everything posted. If I can be of any help along the way, reach out. Um, you know, we can make it oh, happen. Sure I will. Yeah. Please do. Um, Stan, uh, Stan Tashiro says, "Aloha, Andrew and Jay. Always love you guys playing." Uh, oh, thanks, Sam. Uh, Thank you, Stan. He's, uh, he plays ukulele himself, uh, plays uh, guitar. And here's Auntie Hetty. She's saying, just checked in for the last melee, being a busy morning for me, so I wanted to check in. Auntie Hetty is one of our um, our Ohana that um, uh, checks in on our show here. Hello, Hetty. So, the, <laughs> so um, we're going to so just just um, hang out, guys. Um, we're gonna we're just going to um, do a uh, a little a little small kind of um, uh, aloha over here to everyone and a big aloha to our crew, the Samaj Island Social Network, Kaki Ao, Mahalo, and Tiheri. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and um, we see that great smile of you two guys. I wanted to share that picture. I thought that was a great one. <laughs> um, uh, you guys, where were you guys at this shot? Were you here in, remember? That was in Bend, Oregon, uh, 2018. It was called wow. uh, Uke University, which was a pretty cool experience. We got to yeah. teach in these these classrooms, so it's like the closest thing I'll ever get to being a teacher. But it was a pretty, <laughs> it was very cool though. Uh, um, yeah, but, Andrew, and, Andrew, Andrew was sitting behind the desk where the teacher sits, and he goes, "Well, this is a change. You leave him on the other side." <laughs> 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 uh, that's so great. That's so great. Um, big, big mahalo to everyone for joining us here on the um, Aloha Friday show. And um, mahalo, everybody. There you go. Thank you. 